The Glittering Gardens event brings access to early shiny Pokemon for people who can't make it out to the in-person GoFest. So today we're going through all the tips and tricks and everything going down during that event and how you can enjoy your weekend if you're not at London GoFest. So let's get right into it. So this event is going down August 5th at 10 a.m. to August 8th at 8 p.m. all local time. We'll have exclusive wild spawns for Bulbasaur, Jigglypuff, Oddish, Hoppip, Seedot, Cacne, Pedlil, Pharaoh Seed, Spritzy, Swirlix, and Dedenne. Pedalil being the new shiny potential for this event. Two kilometer eggs during the event will be hatching Badoo, Cherubi, Swaddle, Pedalil, Bounce Suite, and rare spawns for Larvesta. There'll also be increased spawns in parks each day for a specific Pokemon. So if you go to those green spaces, you know, your local parks and stuff, there'll be a higher chance you find these Pokemon. On August 5th, it'll be Pedalil. On August 6th, it'll be Cacne. On August 7th, it'll be Oddish. And on August 8th, it'll be Seedot. This can actually be a great way to grind shiny Pedalil if you just go to the park on August 5th. Bonuses during the event will be half distance with your buddy to earn a heart, increased chance of getting an XL candy and walking with your buddy Pokemon, 1.5 times more hatch candy and 1.5 times more hatch Stardust, as well as field research tasks for Tangela, Rosalia, Pedal, and Fungus, and a timed research task that you can go ahead and complete focus on exploration and hatching eggs. With the event details away, let's get right into the tips, starting with the best wild spawn during this event. And it's actually not a bad event. First of all, we have Bulbasaur in there. Bulbasaur evolves into Venusaur, in which Venusaur is good in the Great League and the Ultra League, and also does have the mega form of Mega Venusaur. Not a bad Pokemon to grind at all. Next up, Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff evolves into Wigglytuff, which Wigglytuff is not bad in the Great League. Although Charm was nerfed, it is still a pretty strong Pokemon and can surprise your opponent. We also have Hopup in there, which evolves into Jumpluff. Jumpluff is good in some limited Great League cups. Seedot's also in there, which evolves into Shiftry. Shiftry does have some play in the Great League in some limited metas. It is a very spammy and very effective safe swap. We'll see Petalil in there, which Petalil, although Lilligant's not very good right now. If we ever do see Hisuya Lilligant into the game, this can be an amazing way to try to get some candies and prep for this Pokemon. There's a high chance it just comes in raids like all the other Hisuian Pokemon, but you can still grind the candies and XL candies if you want to prep for it. Pharaoh Seed's also in there, which evolves into Pharaoh Thorn. Pharaoh Thorn, good in some limited Great League metas like we just saw with the Fossil Cup. And finally, Dedenne in there, where Dedenne does have some play in some limited Great League metas. Don't forget, by the way, August 5th, Petal is spawning more often in the parks, so if you do want to grind the candies for that, you can go in the parks and also see dot on august 8th if you want to get some candies for a great league shift tree now we also have the exclusive two kilometer eggs hatching the potential larvesta larvesta a super rare pokemon not a lot of people have it me myself included are you going to go after the two kilometer eggs this event to try to grind larvesta and honestly i'm going to say no larvesta is one of those pokemon that in my opinion at one point will become very very common it'll be spawning probably in the wild and it'll be everywhere right now it is a very very rare exclusive pokemon but i don't see why niantic is not going to make a whole event to try to bring people back where they put Larvesta in the wild and make it very available to everybody. Done in the past, things get less rare as time comes. So to be honest, if you are gonna be hatching the eggs, it better be for trying to get shiny Badoo or shiny Cherubi or some other shiny, but probably avoid hatching them because Larvesta is probably gonna be super, super rare. Now changing the topic off of Larvesta, let's go through how to grind a lot of candies during this event because there are actually some decent Pokemon that you want candies for. Starting with using Pineapple Berries. When you use a Pineapple Berry, it'll multiply your catch candy by two and silver's by 2.34. So if you want more candy, definitely use Pineapple Berries on all those rare Pokemon like the Fuero Seed and other stuff. You can also Mega Evolve a Pokemon. If you don't know when you Mega Evolve a Pokemon, any Pokemon you catch and shares the type with that Mega, you'll get more candy, XL candy, and XP for catching that Pokemon depending on the level of your Mega. It's definitely gonna be worth to go ahead and Mega Evolve the correct Mega Pokemon during this event and and the correct Mega Pokemon is going to be a Grass-type Mega. There are so many Grass-type Pokemon spawning during this event, so definitely go after a Grass. You can Mega Evolve either a Mega Venusaur or a Mega Sceptile or a Mega Obama Snow, all to try to get extra candies for the Grass-types you're spawning during this event. Don't sleep on Mega Evolving a Pokemon. You can also trade. It's still the season of Hidden Gems, which means every time you trade away a Pokemon, you'll get two regular candies and a guaranteed XL candy. So any of these Pokemon you want to grind XL candies for. For example, the Pharaoh Seed's not bad for XLs. Bulbasaur's never bad to have XL candies for. Seedot as well for an Ultra League shift tree. Go ahead and save these Pokemon, trade them away to a friend. You're getting one XL candy every time you make away a trade and can definitely be an effective strategy. Finally, transferring Pokemon. We've been confirmed that the next two times transfer candy spotlight hour is going to be tentacle spotlight hour from 6 to 7 p.m. on August 29. I know it's a long time to wait, but if you do have the extra space and you don't mind holding on to some rare Pokemon like Bulbasaur, Pharaoh Seed, etc., you can hold on to them and wait for a two time transfer candy spotlight hour. Hopefully we get another event though in there with that bonus. Now we do have the bonus of of increased chance of getting an XL candy when walking with your buddy. If you don't know what that means, every time you hit that buddy threshold walking distance, there's a chance you get an XL candy. This can be great to grind XL candies for Pokemon that are not as common in the wild. So I wanna go through what are the best Pokemon to put as your buddy to grind for. 
And specifically, we're gonna talk about PvP. A lot of people are always like, well, I'm gonna put legendaries on as my buddy to try to grind candy during this event. And honestly, I don't recommend that strategy. It takes 20 kilometers to get one candy with your buddy, and there's not even a guaranteed chance it's an XL. So I definitely recommend going with rare candies for the legendary Pokemon. But there are some Pokemon that require a lot less walking, but they're still really rare. Let's go through those. Starting with Lickitung. Lickitung is an amazing Pokemon in the Great League, but it requires a lot of XL candies to get it up there. So I definitely, definitely recommend going ahead and putting a Lickitung, probably the number one Pokemon to put as your buddy, to try to grind candies for it. Second off, we're gonna put Wooloo or a Double in there. I know it just had an event, but if you're still missing candies or XL candies for Wooloo and Double, definitely be an effective strategy to go ahead and grind them during this event. I still don't have enough XLs for a Ultra League Double. You also have Yamask and its evolution line. Yamask only comes back during the Halloween event. So if you miss the Halloween event and you wanna to try to get some XL candies for these Pokemon, definitely go ahead and put it as your buddy. Yeah, those are the three Pokemon I would recommend going ahead and putting as your buddy to try to grind candies for because they're very, very strong in PvP, but they're not at all that common. Now we do have the 1.5 times more hatch Stardust. So you can go ahead and follow the 12, 12 kilometer egg method during this event if you wanna grind a lot of Stardust. The method consists of you grinding up 12, 12 kilometer eggs, which gets you between 3,600 and 6,400 Stardust every time you hatch them. Hatching 12, 12 kilometer eggs on a star piece is gonna get you around 100,000 Stardust. But with this bonus, it's gonna be around 150,000 Stardust. So if you do have the time and the money, you can go ahead and grind up the 12, 12 kilometer eggs, incubate them during the event, hatch them, and you can get a lot of Stardust. Finally, that leads us into our platinum metal tips. You need 35 platinum metals, go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. So let's go through which ones are gonna be the best to go ahead and grind. Starting off, we do have obviously a lot of grass type Pokemon during this event spawning. So the Gardener Metal, cast 2,500 grass types. And there's actually a couple fairy type Pokemon spawning during this event. And this is not an easy metal to get. The Fairy Tail Girl Metal is probably one of the metals that the least amount or the newer players don't have out of all the type metals. So definitely work on this metal if you wanna catch some fairy types. Also, we have those two kilometer eggs during this event. So if you are going after the two kilometer eggs, that will obviously work on your Breeder Metal, hatch 2,500 eggs. Final metal I'll shout out is gonna be the Picnicker Metal. Use the lure module to help any trainer catch 2,500 Pokemon. I don't think there's gonna be that many trainers out, but what you can do is use a mossy lure, which does pull in more grass type Pokemon. So if you're trying to hunt shiny Pedalil, you can go ahead and drop mossy lures. They're gonna be spawning Pedalils plus other grass type Pokemon at a high rate. And it can be a great way to both work on your Pictor Metal and work on grinding those Pedalils. With that being said though, that is my tips for the Glittering Gardens event. I am currently at London Go Fest, hopefully having a good time. But if you guys are not, I hope this event does keep you busy and does allow you to shiny hunt that new shiny pedal which is being released alongside this during london go fest stay tuned for plenty of fun go fest content and we'll see you in the next one fall from tips guys peace